Hello and welcome. Here are a couple of tricks and tools used by Unix administrators on a day-to-day -day basis and especially when you try to automate some tasks and create some bash shell scripts. Here are some requirements and assumptions I'm making. I am, I'm assuming that you already know the basics on how to get to the Unix and Linux shell terminal, which is this one right here, and also that you know how to operate few commands. Let's get started. Today we're going to talk about the standard output and the standard error the use of parentheses, the back quote, also known as the inner execution quote, pipes, and a little gif, the T command. So standard output and standard error. These are basically output streams that are used by Unix to divide the information it displays on the screen or it sends you. So basically this is what happened. When you type a command, the output of that command, what you will see in the screen, is either sent through the standard output or through the standard error. What do I mean by that? Let's see the date command. Date. It gives me the current date as expected. What happened when I put a command that does not exist? It tells me, well, um, the command you tried does not exist. It's, it seems to be that both of them are being sent to the screen the same manner, but in reality, the first message is sent through the standard output and the second one is sent through the standard error. And this is very useful when you try to divide to take out the garbage from the command so you can make uh, more efficient scripts. Let's see how we can use that. So let's say we want to save some um, output to a file. We want to save the current date into a file named date.txt. When I execute this command, as you can see, this greater than sign means send the standard output of this command to the file. So once you execute the command, it will go through the standard output and then it will be saved to a file, only if it goes through the standard output. So when I do this and I see the contents of the date command, or that's sorry, the date text file, we can see that the current date is showing there. What before it was showing the screen. Now what happens if I run a command that does not exist? And I send it again to date.txt. What happens is now it's showing me in the screen the error it got and when I see the contents of the date file there is nothing there because we told it exclusively go only and set only record the standard output do not record the standard error now what happened if we want to save only the error you're making a script and you want to send all the errors to a log file so you can analyze them later what we can do is we can tell date commands let's, let's create another command that doesn't exist again and I will tell it well send the standard error to a file named date error.txt now what you can see here is if you put a number right before the greater than sign it represents one of the standard streams number one represents standard output number two represents standard error in this case we're telling it we're telling the command that you will record the error only if you're using this facility the standard error I execute this it does not show me anything in the screen because I told it to send, to send it to a file and when I see the, the output of this file it shows me the error that I was expected to see in the screen before Okay, now we know how to save only the error. What happens if I want to save both the standard output and the standard error into a single file, regardless? Uh, before I move, on to move, I move there, let me show you what happens if I type the date command. Date, and it's in. I type the date command, I said send the standard error to date error.txt. What happens is, it's showing me the output and inside the file there is nothing because again we're, desc we're describing here that we will only record if everything is sent through the standard error not through the standard output so the standard output goes back to the screen again that's cool now let's save both of them into a single file say we run the date command again and then if you put an ampersand sign right here it basically means both standard output and the standard error and send all this to a file called date.txt let's recycle that file 
What happens if I see the contents of the .txt? It's showing me the date as I expected. Now let's run a fake command. And I send everything to date.txt. When I see the contents of this file, it's showing me the error. So this is the way in which, which, which we can tell the system, send me, save both of the facilities in a file, regardless where they come from. And another very simple trick that sometimes you're tapping a lot of commands and you might make a, you might make some mistakes here and there. If you don't want to see the mistakes, you can also send the standard error to a file called dev null. Dev null is basically a black hole, to put it in simple terms. It will eat everything and it will not save anything and basically make it disappear on the fly. So in this case, I'm sending only the standard error to the black hole, but if I run a good command like the date command, and I send it to I send the errors to dev null, it will still show me the file. Dev null works as a file in this in this case. So now let's move on to the next one: the use of parentheses. Parentheses. Sometimes we want to execute two commands, but run it as once. For example. The echo command allows me to type something in the screen, for example, if I want to say hello, I just put echo hello and it will display it in the screen. Say I want to say today is, and I want to run another command called date. Here's a little trick. When you put a semicolon in between commands, it's exactly the same as running one command, press enter, and then running another command and pressing enter. So it will allow me to put two commands on a single line. When I run this, it tells me today is, and run this command as well. Okay, but now, let's say I want to save this into a file. All right, what's the logical step? Hello, today is, date, and what most people would do would be just to send this to a file called message.txt, for example. And what happened right here? It only showed me the echo, the output of the echo command, the standard output, and the file, the message file, only has the date. Again, because this, uh, this semicolon splits this into two commands, only the second one is interpreted as a single uh, command. So it, will, it says, okay, execute this, then move on, and the second command send it to a file. But that's not what I wanted. I wanted to run two commands and send it to a file. And this is where parentheses come in handy. You can just open a parenthesis, say echo, today is, I can put my semicolon here, put the date on, close this on, and send it to messages.txt. What it means is, anything I put inside of the parentheses has to be considered as a single command in a whole, and you will send all the standard outputs or standard errors into a single one. And then I want to put that into a file. So again, we go back to the concept of standard output and standard error. In this case, we're nesting. We're putting one standard output from here and a standard output from here into a single one so we can manipulate it. When I run, when I see the contents of the message file, we can see the output we were expecting. Alright, this also works for standard error, but um, I think you'll figure that out quickly. Now, um, a little bit easier to understand is the back quote or the inner execution quote. I call it the inner execution for one reason. The back quote is not the normal quote you get when you say, for example, today's. Is this um, this back quote. You'll find it in your keyword somewhere. Now, this back quote in Unix or in shell, it means run another command inside of a command. This parenthesis means uh, execute two commands with a single standard output. This is run one inside of the other. Let's make an example. Let's echo. Uh, let's use today is and say you want to run the date command here. OK, 
okay if you put it right just like this it will say well today is date now if I put in an execution quotes I'm telling it well date is actually not really a word it's a command I want you to execute inside when you do this it will tell you today is Saturday May 26 now this is very cool what's going on inside what happens is it will execute this command and it will send the standard output to as a standard input of the other command. Don't have to really think too much about it. This is just the background. This is the background. But what's important is that we can recycle this command and send everything to the message file. For example, message.txt. That's when I got had the message file. It gives me the output I was looking for. Today is Saturday, May 26th. So the inner execution code, as the name mentions, it just executes something inside, which can come pretty handy. Now let's move up to the last item, which is the pipes and the T command. T command might not be very well known, so this is my freebie for today. So let's say I want to say I want to display a message uh, saying thank you. Now I want to display this message, but I want to save it to a file, but at the same time, I want to see it on the screen. But I don't want to type it twice. That's not a really good practice. So we're going to use a pipe and a command called T. Hyphen A means append to a file. Oh, let's not append, let's just put it here. Let's put it into the message file. Now, what does this pipe do? It will take the output of this command and I will put it into the next command as part of the input. Now, what the T command does is allow you to do exactly what I mentioned before. It allows you to say something and at the same time save it to a file. I'm going to make more examples on the use of pipe, but uh, it's a very, very important tool, probably one of the most important and you will be using all the time. But as of right now, the only thing you need to understand is it will send whatever is the output from this as part, as input for another command, not to show it in the screen. It will give it to the other command and let the other command handle it. It's basically passing the responsibility to the next command. And you can put more and pipes and more commands, etc. So when I do this, let me just to make sure that everything is fine, let me remove the message file so there is nothing there. Now I'm going to again run the echo thank you t message now what happens here is the t command says well I will allow you to uh, see the thank you commands and also I save a copy for you in the messages file this is the ability of the t command but where does the t command got the word thank you you got it from the previous command. One common use of this is when you do the ls command. It says, oh, I have three files. And no, I want to filter them out. I only want to see the, the output that says date. So ls-l and egrep is one command that allows you to filter by a rule. So the rule is that it needs to contain the word date. If it doesn't say date, don't show me the output. So as you can see, it only gives me the files that contain date, but it does not show me messages. What happens is, yeah, I run the command, and then egrep will take this and just filter everything that contains the word date based on the output of this command. Okay, I hope uh, this explanation is clear enough for you. If there are some questions, you can just put it down in the comments. And thank you very much for watching.